Welcome to another episode of Drops from the Well, where we explore life with a Hasidic lens. And today I want to take a look at the purpose of living. There's an elephant in the room to all human beings, to the human condition, which recognizes that no matter what happens, life is transient, we're all mortal, and one day we're going to die. And that means that no matter what you do, no matter what you achieve and accomplish in life, it's today here, tomorrow gone. So what's the point? Now in Judaism, there's two schools of thought. And if we take a look at them, we gain insight into how Judaism finds a path to overcome mortality and connect to the immortal. So the first school of thought says that, look, the body is indeed transient. Yes, the body dies and decays. But even as the body dies, there is still a spiritual soul. And that spiritual soul continues to live. So as long as you understand, you believe in spirituality, you know that the physical body is not it. And when you want to know how do we get immortal, the answer is the spiritual. The trouble is that that means that if you're living life for 70, 80, 120 years, you have to wait for your reward a long time, till the end of life, till 120 years, and then you get your reward. But today, for a young person, the reward is still so far away. It's something which is not present and not real. And we want gratification. We want to feel like there's a purpose and a value now, not that one day I'm going to get some reward later on. It's like a worker wants to feel that there's value in what I'm doing now. I, I, I want to work and I want to not just know I'm getting a salary. I want to know that I'm doing something that's meaningful and impactful. And in Judaism, it's not just that one day we're going to get a spiritual reward, but then the physical world is left bereft and the physical world is indeed mortal. And what was the point of doing the physical act? So there's another school of thought. And they're not arguing two schools of thought. It's just that the question is what to focus on. We definitely agree there's going to be an afterlife. Absolutely. The question is what's the focus? So in Hasidus, the focus is on Tchias Amesim, on the resurrection of the dead. That means that all those who died and were mortal one day come back and return. And the reward is in this physical world. So the physical itself gets rewarded. But if you're wondering, so how does Tchies Amesim work? I mean, the body still has to die, and that means that it's not the same body as, as always was. It's a brand new body. So the body itself doesn't actually remain immortal. So if I want to stay this physical body immortal, well, this is not going to answer up the question, because the body that comes back is a new body. So the Metrish tells us, how does the body get reconstructed in Tchies Amesim, in the resurrection of the dead. And it says something fascinating, that there's this bone that's called the Luz bone. And this bone, the Chassam Seifer, a scholar of 200 years ago, explained that when Adam and Eve sinned, and when they sinned, they brought mortality and death into the world, he says one part of them did not participate in the sin. When they ate the fruit, they enjoyed, their whole beings enjoyed the eating. One part of them didn't participate, and that's called the loose bone. And so one day, when God reconstructs, he reconstructs the body, he takes the loose bone, which remained immortal, and he reconstructs the body. But here's the key. He doesn't create a new body. The loose bone is like a brain chip. So the whole body is condensed into the loose bone, and then it's reconstructed. And the Medrash explains it, that they were also, when Adam and Eve sinned, they gave all the animals and the birds in the world to also eat of the fruit. And all the animals and birds ate, except for one animal, one bird. It's called the Chul bird. And she refused to eat. And as a result, all of them, all of them became mortal beings and would die. And this Chul bird doesn't die. Not exactly. It lives a thousand years. And after a thousand years, it dies. But then it gets reconstructed. There's a little core that remains, and that core is rebuilt, and the bird 
is reconstructed from that core. And the same thing applies to the etzim luz in the human body. It's the one part of us, a physical part, some part of us, that remains intact forever. And when the body gets reconstructed in Tchies Mason, so it comes from this luz bone. So when a person wants to know, am I mortal or immortal? The answer is there's one physical part to you. It's called the loose bone that's immortal, that doesn't disappear. And this loose bone is the brain chip from which the rest of the body is not created a new, it's not a new body. It's the same body which was condensed like a brain chip and then it was reconstructed and recreated. What that means is that every mitzvah we do with this body that we have, we use our fingers, our hands, our arms, our feet, our eyes for doing mitzvahs. So every time you do a mitzvah, you're actually increasing the immortality by drawing down the power of God onto your body. And that body doesn't disappear. It's not that the body disintegrates and then there's going to be one day a, um, a spiritual afterlife. No, one day, that's, that's true. But the real reward is when one day the etzim lose, the loose bone is reconstructed. When the body disintegrated, it went into the loose bone and the loose bone is able to rebuild the whole entire body. So the same body comes back. And that means that every mitzvah you do is going to be, is actually immortal. And, and the more mitzvahs you do, the more immortal the body becomes. And when we do enough of them around the world, the whole world is able to experience this, um, this connection to the immortal. So when we're wondering about the immortality, the answer is, yeah, there's a spiritual afterlife. But much more than that, this physical world is actually immortal. When we reconstruct it from the loose bone, we get the same physical world in a better format, in an eternal format. Because the physical world is intrinsically holy.